home to are ladies, because it's almost always a lady. Ours was Lisa. She was tall and beautiful, and my dad loved her. So we're going in on the tour. I'm pushing my dad along. Lisa's got my auntie, and we're going along, and they're doing this. Like, I don't know if you've ever been on the tour. Here's the dining room. Here's the activity center. Oh, and we have bingo on Thursday. And I'm thinking, awesome. I love bingo. I, I haven't played in years, but I always win. I guess that's why I like it, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I never thought about that, but I'm lucky that way. So I'm thinking, bingo, awesome. They also serve cookies every afternoon. Fresh baked cookies. I'm like, that's good too. All of a sudden, I feel the wheelchair goes like this, stop. And I hear my dad put his feet down, and my aunt too. And they stare at each other, and they look up at Lisa with this face I've never seen, and together they say, we hate bingo. <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't know this about them. I didn't know they didn't like bingo, and here I am thinking this is a good thing. What was my mistake? I was assuming that they would want what I want. I was assuming that what brought them joy would bring me joy. I'm not living there, right? I'm not going to sleep there and eat there and have the activities they are. This is what's so crucial. When you're making a decision for your loved one, it is about the loved one's experience. And so immediately I said to Lisa, luckily I knew my mistake, Lisa, what else do you have? Right? And they, she said, we have music. My dad put his feet up, happy. We have art. My auntie put her feet up, happy. And we rolled along, and they lived there for four or five years wonderfully. Because I listened to their needs. That doesn't mean I need to discount my needs, though I did. Remember, I'm on the ground. But I need to make sure I'm making decisions that will work for them.